You are now listening to Vibe Selection with Kyra, where you can get the real on today's hot topics. Well, welcome, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Vibe Selection. As you already know, I am your host, Kyra. And on today's episode, I have two very special guests joining me. First, I have JJ Rose 777, who is a ordained minister, psychic, energy clearing expert, paranormal investigator, among many other wonderful hats that she wears. And she is also a very good friend of mine who is joining me. And then we also have Eric Zalaji, who is the host and creator of the Uncomfortable podcast that deals with all things strange and unusual, where guests recount their personal experience with the unknown. Well, how are you folks doing today? Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Kyra. Very good. Thank you, Kyra. Good to be here. Yes. So I want to start off by talking about this David Grush briefing that he had with Congress. So, so much is is here to unpack in regards to this topic. And it I am just completely flabbergasted to hear everything. So I want to know what are your thoughts about David Grush's, you know, briefing and the things that he said and us realizing that we've actually been in contact with aliens for a long time now and that the government has been hoarding information from the general public. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to, contrary to popular belief, when you say that the government has been hoarding information and keeping it away from the general public, I don't, I used to be in that boat. I used to think that, yes, that's exactly what's been going on. It is to some extent. I think... I think what's going on, though, is is stuff that is being brought up. And that's why, you know, like these um, these congressional hearings that David Grush and uh, the others that have been testifying, what makes this so important is that we're finding out that it's not necessarily the actors in the constitutional government that have been keeping the information from us. What's been coming out in these hearings is that there are third party contractors who were working on behalf of the government who are retrieving these craft, consequently retrieving the insides of uh, the contents of these craft, which according to David Gresh has been biological Um, entities and that they are stockpiling and warehousing this information and these craft and they are selling off technology. They are exploiting that technology and they are the ones that are keeping our conventional government, the people that are running our government, those that conventional sense of knowing what's going on, they're keeping that information from them. So, you know, what you, what you said is in it's it's true, in fact, but I think what we're finding out more now is there is it goes it goes much deeper that that information is being withheld from the people who are actually flipping the bill to have these third party contractors do the jobs that they're doing. So, you know, it's like me hiring you to go do some research for me and then you do the research, but you tell me you're not going to give me, you're not going to tell me what it was. (laughs) I've I've already paid you and and now I don't get the information. So. Right. And that's, and I think the other part that's coming to light is that just because you're in government, right? You're in Congress, you're in the Senate, or you're a staffer, it doesn't mean that you get to know everything. Just like there's been many presidents in the past that have said, you know, Bill Clinton was the famous line of, well, if there are aliens, they sure didn't show them to me. Not everyone is read in. And a lot of what these congressional hearings are bringing to light is that because these are elected officials, they're in for four years, then they can be voted out. They're not read into everything. 
And rightfully so, right? If you think from a military perspective or even from a government perspective, trying to keep our country safe, not everyone needs to know everything that can quickly be voted out. The, the, um, president, the, the president is a short-term employee. Absolutely. As are Congress and Senate. So if I, I feel like what this has done is really taken out this, oh, the government knows everything and they're just lying to us. And it's showing that there really has been this, you know, they could conspiracy theorist for this shadow government entity or military industrial complex, whatever you want to call it. There's many words that has been running things behind the scenes that has had this information that it is starting to work with external contractors in order to keep things off the books. There have been things like black money that was talked about during the Iran Contra back in Reagan's day um, that's been happening for years. People didn't exactly understand the scope of what that meant and where those funds were going to. But this is really bringing this up to the forefront that just because you're an elected official doesn't mean that you're read in on everything. That I think is really important. And I also feel that from Eric's perspective, that I think is a little bit of the disconnect where some people are realizing that and other people maybe don't care as much. I think there's a lot of apathy around this right now as well, because just as as much as Grush and the others are testifying and, and they're saying what they're saying, because someone's not, you know, hauling in on a U-Haul, a UFO and an alien body into the middle of the congressional hearing. Some people are like, eh, let me know when that happens. And that's also something, you know, I'd like to address as well. Right. So I know that you recently did a YouTube video, JJ Rose 777, on apathy. And so I want you to explain a little bit more about the meaning behind that. Yeah, you know, it's it's a short little eight minute video. But when this disclosure happened, you know, I was beyond stoked. Finally, this stuff is being talked about. It's being talked about in a way that a lot of people are actually listening to and waking up and they can't make fun of it. There's been a lot of disclosure before even Grush, Um, you know, starting in March of 2023, there was Christopher Bledsoe who came out with the book and his foreword was written by Jim Sivian, who was a former CIA um, dictorate of operations and then his introduction was written by Colonel John B. Alexander, who's retired, a PhD, retired from the U.S. Army. Those are two pretty heavy hitters writing the foreword for a man who's talking about being able to see UFOs and orbs. So that comes out. Then you have April, where you have a whistleblower come out on 4chan who basically for a week was answering all of these questions, um, wasn't answering them like an AI, was giving all these secrets and things away, whether you want to believe that or not, it was still happening. Behind the scenes in April is when Grush was actually preparing for his interview with News Nation that aired in June. And You know, then you had the Las Vegas incident that technically happened on May 1st, but no one really talked about it for a month until all of a sudden in June, all the news stations, local, national, all of them are talking about this alien craft that was caught on camera. This weird thing fell out of the sky and this poor family that was terrified and called the police. And then you have the police body cam showing them asking people in the area, you know, have you seen anything weird? I know this sounds crazy. And then after that, the Las Vegas police were saying the whole neighborhood was bombarded by black government cars. All of their body cam footage was confiscated and they were all told not to talk about it. And then you have Grush come out with this groundbreaking interview saying all these things. I mean, it it was a lot. And a lot of people think only Grush in the congressional hearings, but it's been months. And, you know, Eric knows a lot going all the way back, but this has been going on since 1930s. And really, it's actually been going on since 
the beginning of humanity and a little bit even before that as well, because there's been a lot. I watch a show called Ancient Aliens, which I have to thank to JJ Row 777 for turning me on to. And <laughs> I love that show because it gives you supporting evidence while also giving you the connection between religion and science. And I love the way that they break things down. And they've explained many times um, how a lot of what we come to find in the Bible and Christianity specifically is that a lot of the people like Moses has been in contact with extraterrestrials um, for a really long time. And they have helped to give us technology um, they have they've uh, given us pyramids that we see and so much more, you know, medicine, you know, they've helped us with survival. So they've been a part of our lives for a really long time. And I feel like it's interesting to me how back then people seemed more open to gaining the help from the aliens than what's going on now. We seem to be more resistant in it. So I kind of want to know what both of you think as the cause of the resistance now. Eric. Mm. Okay. Wow. That's a lot to unpack. That's a deep one. Um, So in the, in the UFO community, when you, I mean, I'm not talking about enthusiasts or people that thought they might have seen a light in the sky or actually did see a light in the sky that didn't act right. I'm talking about the 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 larger population of people who have been doing boots on the ground investigating and reporting and this type of stuff. We've had... Um, you know, like Dr. Stephen Greer, all of a sudden, like in the past couple of years, he's really getting a lot of notoriety because he's had a couple of um, really good uh, documentaries that have come out and he's, you know, doing this disclosure. Stephen Greer started his disclosure project in 1993. So that's a long time. You know, he's been at this for a long time. And since the inception of his disclosure project, he has had numerous and now many, many former military, active military, Air Force, mil- uh, Army, Marines, his, his list of people who have come to him with experiences and with um the understanding that they have worked on projects that have been related to these things. It, it's, it's incredible. You know, um, I, I don't remember where I heard it, um, but you know, apparently the first of the retrievals uh, of actual craft happened back in the 1930s. Mm-hmm. Mussolini, uh, Benito Mussolini contacted the, the Vatican because he found a, uh, a crashed flying saucer. He didn't know what the hell it was. I, I don't believe he was ref- referencing it as a, a flying saucer. Um, but the Vatican sent representatives out and they, they were the first to, you know, so they've been complicit with uh, the idea that something from other than here exists, you know, and I, I want to say it was like this within the last 10 years, maybe the last eight or nine years, something like that. Um, the current Pope had had come out kind of out of the clear blue and and made this one off comment about if extraterrestrials are real, then naturally they would have a soul as well. And we need to treat them as as such. And that was in 2014, by the way, Eric. Yeah, you know, so to hear that come out of out of the Pope, you know, the head of the Catholic Church, arguably arguably the most powerful uh, religion in the in the world, definitely the most wealthiest, um, you know, to to say that is what prompted that? Why would you even, you know, I mean, is that a joke? Why would you say that? Well. Um, what's also interesting on that is part of Grush's disclosure was that the Pope 
Pope Pius XII actually notified the United States. And there is an actual picture of the letter that he wrote the president. And it shows on the bottom an aircraft followed by two flying saucers. Wow. Also, Ronald Reagan um, talked about his experience with seeing a UFO. Um, He was flying from, I believe it was Merced. And while he was on his plane, this is when he was the governor, governor, excuse me, of California. And so he was flying on a plane and him and the pilot and everybody that was on this plane witnessed this UFO. And so that really sparked his interest in wanting to get a little bit more familiar with aliens and UFOs and what's really going on. And I know on September 7th of, I believe, 1987, he had the space deb- or space briefing where he started to discuss how, you know, they were going to launch this whole Space Force thing and go up to space so that they can garner technology such as chips, um, how they would be able to cure certain diseases such as cancer and diabetes, amongst a lot of other things. And so um, we see that everybody has had a sort of experience with it. And now we're also seeing how there's a lot of just regular folks, regular civilians that are going about their everyday um, that are also experiencing a lot of these phenomenons as well that aren't really able to put, you know, a, a reason behind it. And so it's fascinating to me to see what's come over time and why. So my question is also, why do you feel we're having more of these experiences with aliens in today's time? Personally, um, I'm, I'm 58 years old. I've been crazed, obsessed with UFOs since I was five. And I have always been on the on the side that if they're in a spaceship, then obviously they're extraterrestrial. They've got to be coming from another planet, right? Um, These past couple of years, I don't know that that's right. Mm -hmm. I am, I am now um, very much entertaining the idea that this uh, this may be an interdimensional, a transdimensional um, situation. I don't, you know, I, I just I'm not sure that you know we're looking out at the stars at night and saying, okay, yeah, they're coming from way over there. I, I don't know, you know, they may be from there, but I don't think they're flying in their craft. From there to here, they're either coming through a different way, which would be transdimensional, passing through dimensions, because the physics don't make sense for that kind of travel. It'd take too long, and it would be too difficult and too hard on a biological entity to to be able to do that so i think they're i think they're coming from somewhere else jj what do you think <laughs> i got a two-prong answer for you and i'm, I'm going to try and short form this as best as i can um you know in regards to what eric is talking about there are things such as portals um Kyra, you know, you and I have dealt with them in some paranormal stuff that we've worked on. Um, Those aren't just for, you know, ghosts and and different things like that. There are actual wormhole physics portals. And, you know, if, if you watch a show on TV called Skinwalker Ranch and even beyond Skinwalker Ranch, um, they've been showing the actual physics of that and proving it in its validity. There are things that are coming from other places here. There are also things that are here that are coming through different dimensions. That's why we see them as shadow people. Um, So I used to call them peekaboo people because we would like peekaboo, I see you, and then they're gone. And you see them almost in shadow form. That's probably what we look like to them as well. It's fleeting. They're not there for a very long time. Um, You know, so when I 
heard all these people blown up on the internet talking about shadow people. I'm like, what's the big deal? I, I see those all the time and realized they were actually seeing something else, which was a darker entity, right? If it's standing there and it has red eyes and it's making you fearful, that's obviously not just a peep through from another dimension. Now, you know, back to what you see in the sky is that a hundred percent something from another dimension or another world. It's a little bit of a complicated answer. Um, I'm going to share a story. So back in the early eighties, um, we had a family friend who knew a gentleman who had served in Vietnam and had had some really intense experiences in which he was abducted hmm. and he had a lot of trauma around it. And he was uh, working with our friend in writing a book and I remember a friend coming over and, you know, talking to my parents and saying, I'm barely able to get past, you know, page one with this guy, because every time he goes to talk about it, he breaks down. And I don't know how to make him feel comfortable enough for him to even share a story. Like, he's sobbing, he's freaking out, like, what do I do? And I, I remember feeling like that much trauma associated with a being that's coming all this way and excuse me for being crude but just to you know probe you in the bum right and poke you doesn't make any sense to me um and i i have heard some people say like okay but they would look at us how like we look at ants or how we look at cattle still still doesn't make sense to me um and what does make sense is if some of this technology has been reversed and there has been a sub faction of humans that are using this technology and they were conducting experiments and mimicking things, whether it's under hypnosis or hallucinogens, et cetera. And they were mimicking some abduction scenarios with people and implanting very scary ideas in their heads. Those people would come back with a lot of trauma versus true people who are really meeting with something from another world or another dimension, because if you're in another dimension, you're in a higher frequency and vibration, which typically isn't fear, anger, and all this nasty stuff that people are coming back with. Now, granted, you know, I've astral traveled a lot. I've been a lot of different places. There are times I come back and the way things feel or I remember them are very disjointed. So I understand that much um, of it being disjointed and time not making sense. But I was never scared. There are times when things were weird, but it usually was because it's a technology I'm not familiar with. So I could understand if they have special cameras or scanners that are getting close, someone would think, oh, they're probing me, when in reality, they're just taking pictures. But these really scary UFO abductions, I feel were done by humans who had reversed some technology and or were doing it under, you know, a form of hallucination, um, hallucinogens, sorry, and hypnotic suggestion. So that leads us into a much bigger field, which is what is it that we're really working with? And what is it that someone actually reversed engineered to begin with? I mean, there are things back in the 1400s of people on ships writing down captains of the ships, writing down these strange lights in the sky that they were seeing. There's, um, you know, in Nuremberg, Germany, there's a woodcut showing a complete celestial battle happening in the sky. If you read the Mahabharata in the Indian culture, you will see that they're very clearly talking about Vimanas, which are basically flying spaceships, I mean, cities in the sky. Hello. Um, even when you go back in Greek and Roman, you know, when they're talking about, oh, they lived on, on top of the mountain, well, why would a whole bunch of people go live on the top of a mountain? Like, that's not really comfortable. And how are they able to come up and down the mountain and speak with the normal people so easily? It's probably because they have a big old craft up there, right? <laughs> so, you know, and in all of those old stories and old lore, they were helpful. They were trying to help people. Um, obviously, people regarded them as something other than human. So mm -hmm. instinctually, we all know, I mean, even when you look back at in Genesis 19.3, when it talks about Sodom and Gomorrah, they were talking about 
beings that not only they weren't human, they knew that much, but they looked human enough. People were attracted to them, which also would be a higher frequency and vibration. But these beings sat down and ate with them and slept in their house. So if these beings have to eat and sleep, then they're not, there's some sort of physical and tangible to them. And then they can just kind of disappear at will, meaning they can phase in and out. Right. So I know I just threw a lot at you all and Eric. No, <laughs> um, I love this. There's that. more to unpack. I'm going to dig this hole deeper for you. <laughs> nice. Let's go. Let's go. Ready. So, you know, jumping on what JJ was just saying, if, if you pay any attention to the past four or five years, as far as anything that would be remotely considered disclosure, you're going to find two very different segments of thought. You're going to find the the U.S. military aspect of it, doing these things as a security threat, and they are going to put a spin on, and not it's not that it's necessarily the wrong spin, but I don't think we know. They're going to say that it's a threat, and that we mean we need to be prepared to deal with that. Then you have the other side of the community that is uh, much more in lines with Dr. Stephen, Stephen Greer. And he references them as benevolent beings. They're here to help us. They're here to help educate, to help right the, uh, the, the atrocities that we've committed against Mother Earth and get everything back. So what's the truth? We don't know. But if it is true that what David Grush is saying and that what we've heard for years now is that there are third party contractors who are responsible for the gathering up and um, containment of craft that are not from here. And if they're being taken apart and reverse engineered by people like Bob Lazar, who outed Area 51 back in the late 1980s, thanks to George Knapp. If this is true, what is our interest in, in, in tearing these things apart and trying to find out how they work, why they work, what makes them work? Well, if we can build something that is close to as good as that is, then what kind of a benefit would that give us militarily throughout the rest of the world? That would take us to much higher abilities than any other government in the world, right? Any other military in the world. Now, what if somebody, possibly somebody corrupt, had the idea that, wait a minute now, let's take that technology and let's use it against our own people, Let's build some things that look very much like a UFO, that fly like a UFO, that act like a UFO. And maybe we'll fly around and we'll do some cattle mutilations. Maybe we'll abduct some people and implant some false screen memories to make them believe that they were abducted by aliens. And then once we get further, fur, farther, uh, far enough along with this technology, would we not be able to create a false flag invasion, an invasion of UFOs that would be broadcast to the world and scare the hell out of everybody? But what if it wasn't aliens? What if it was us? What would that do? Right. And that goes into my idea of a lot of this alien talk has led to a lot of fear mongering. And we have a lot of fears that are going on right now. I mean, we can talk about the whole COVID thing that put a lot of people in fear with that. And the fact that we still don't even have a cure or really even understand how that whole situation works. And then couple that in with 
now we're learning about this alien phenomenon and we're just like over our heads right now because most of the people, they're just trying to survive at this point. And so we have all of these things that have been continuously thrown at us these last couple of years and we've been distracted from what's really going on to be able to assess even that thought that you just came up with of that, you know, maybe if we put the fear in people, maybe we can also be able to control them as well. And so it it really boils all down to a sense of if we continue to put fear in people, if we continue to create certain diseases, right? If we continue to do certain things, like if we continue to put drugs in certain communities to certain people, if we continue to take jobs away from people and give them to AIs, if we continue to disarm people with not allowing them to have the right to bear arms and all of these things, right? We create this fear and in turn, you're able to control people because once you're able to put fear in them, you know that you have the control and they're going to stifle to whatever it is next that you want to decide you wanted to do. And so it seems like. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to that point, fear has been used as a control tactic for almost ever, whether it's fear because someone or something else is going to kill you and take your land if you don't comply or religion, you know, convert or die um, all the way down into the stuff that we're dealing with. You know, you had mentioned that uh, the YouTube that I had done about apathy and the whole reason I decided to even, you know, go out of my way and, and do that is because here we're on the eve of all this disclosure, all this stuff that Eric and I have waited most of our lives has, is finally coming out. It's coming out in Congress, in an open hearing. It's starting to be talked about on news channels, and it's really exciting to us. And I go on social media because I like to keep a pulse on what people are talking about and what's happening, and I also want to hear some of the reactions. And I got sent the same three videos by over 30 people. And it was, um, it's usually one person who's talking about all the disclosure and they short form it. And then another person reacting going, yeah, but I still have to wake up tomorrow and go to my job. I still have to pay my rent. I still have to feed my kids. So, you know, until it's a UFO is hauled in in the middle of Congress, like I kind of don't want to hear about it. Or another person who's just like, meh. And this form of apathy has almost permeated, you know, definitely your generation and younger Kyra, because of you guys have been hit with so many major disasters and apocalyptic events, you know, one after the other, pretty much since you all were born. And, you know, that's pretty much for anyone 35 years of age and younger. It's, I mean, and God forbid people in their 20s, I've talked to some of them, they're like, you know, I was born and then 9-11 happened, and then it just rolled downhill from there. And they're not wrong. And there is a form of apathy that comes with that. And the problem with apathy is it's in line with fear. If you're apathetic towards something, or if you're fearful, you can be controlled because you either don't care enough to even like look up from what you're doing to take notice that all these things are happening and someone's trying to control or manipulate you because you don't care. Or you're in so much fear that you're immediately falling into line and you're not using any critical or rational thinking. And I know Eric is really huge on critical thinking and getting people to ask the questions and really use your mind. Like, don't just take what you're being spoon fed through, whether it's the media or whatever, like ask the questions. If something doesn't make sense, ask a question. And if someone's going to tell you, you can't ask that question. There's a problem there. You know, I had issues with religion in Bible studies and even when I was a kid, because I would always be one of the ones asking the questions and no one liked that. So I was like, yeah, this isn't for me, Um, Mm -hmm. because my issue is if if I'm asking a question and you're telling me stop asking questions, what are you hiding? Right. Well, you know, to to JJ's point, you know, the critical thinking. 
is it's a huge thing. A lot of people don't do it. A lot of people don't know how to do it. And this is going to be an example I'll give you. So, you know, a couple of years ago, they came out and announced a new branch of the U.S. military, the Space Force. Mm -hmm. Sounded ridiculous. And then Elon has a SpaceX. It sounds ridiculous. Mm -hmm. The Space Force. But I'll tell you what, if you want to do a little bit of Googling and find out what states are being looked at as far as Space Force bases, you can find that. Mm. Michigan, which is about five minutes north of me, Michigan is in buying for a position in two different parts of the state. One up near the upper part of the lower peninsula, and then one down a little bit further, about middle of the lower peninsula. But if you look into it, one of those places is under consideration for a for, for horizontal takeoff. Mm-hmm. And the other place is under consideration for vertical takeoff. Now, what does that mean? Airplanes, conventional airplanes, other than the Harrier jet, they take off horizontally. They have to have a runway. They, they have to get, get enough speed, and then they get lift. Vertical takeoff. Now, I'm pretty sure that when the U.S. Army decided to announce, hey, we've got an army, they didn't announce it. And then decide, we're probably going to need Jeeps. We're probably going to need guns. We should get some trucks, maybe some tanks, and some heavy armament. They probably already had that stuff figured out when they decided to organize and make the military. Same with the Marines. Same with the Navy. I don't think the Navy came out and said, hey, we're, <laughs> we're going to patrol the seas. And then, okay, we got to figure out how to make boats big enough to carry these guys. We're going to need a bigger boat. (laughs) Yeah. So so if they're announcing that we have a space force and there are specific locations for vertical and horizontal takeoff, what would that tell you? We probably have vehicles that are capable of doing that. Mm. That and rockets. Mm Mm-hmm. And helicopters. Right. (laughs) And there are some other aircraft as well that can do, you know, a vertical takeoff. But they can't go into space. Correct. And and I think the biggest thing you talked about, Eric, is they they wouldn't announce that they're opening the entire new branch and then start looking for stuff afterwards. Right. I mean Come on, right? Which means they've already been in operation just under the guise of another branch. And now they're breaking it off in order, you know, to ease up funds for that branch and get funding for another branch and separate it out. Which means they've been doing this stuff from space for years, which we all know there have been different space programs like the Star Wars program. There's been a whole others. Um, You know, there was the Rods from God program as well. Um, But, you know, one of the things that is very interesting about the time that we have spent in space is the the Black Knight satellite, Mm -hmm. you know, and this thing has been talked about for a long, long time, Um, you know, a thousand years ago when they were just using um, telescopes. This thing apparently was reported to be in our in our atmosphere or in our orbit. Um, now there's now there's very clear photographs and video of this thing, and nobody knows who it is. No, but no countries are taking credit for it. Nobody knows where it's come from, uh, but it's estimated to have been in our. Uh, in our orbit of our earth for uh, somewhere around 11 or 13,000 years. Wow. You know, where's that, where does it come from? It, it's obviously a, 
uh, a piece of machinery. Um, it looks manufactured to some extent. It's very strange looking, but you know, it does look like it's machined. What is it? Has it been keeping tabs on us? Has it been watching, you know, does it, I have no idea. Um, but you know, this, I guess all that to say that this stuff has been going on for a long, long time. And we're just now, you know, we're, we're getting all excited about it and, and I am, but at the end of the day, I don't think we're going to, I don't think we, the people are going to learn a lot more about what's going on. I, I'm, I'm afraid that we're going to get enough where, you know, we can, we can look at it and we can extrapolate some, some pretty sound ideas. Um, but at the end of the day, as long as there is a, um, a, a part of the government, a part of the military that feels this is a threat to national security, those things will all be kept hush hush because, you know, in, in, in fairness, I mean, I don't think I should be aware of all the things that we have in practice that keep us safe from China or North Korea or Russia. I don't need to know about it. You know, as long as it's there and it's keeping us protected and we're, and, and we're safe because of it. Mm-hmm. Great. Do your thing. I don't need to know about it. You know, right. um, I would love to know about it. Right. <laughs> you know, I'd love, I'd love to know what those conversations are and, and you know, what, what are, what's in place and what's not, but you know, I, I mean, I think we're going to get enough that I think we're going to get enough that if there is, you know, I, I don't know if you've heard of project blue Beam. a lot of people talk about, Project Blue Beam as being this conspiratorial idea that along with human made UFOs, alien reproduction craft, and the use of very high tech holographic projections, that they would be able to essentially create an invasion in the skies over any or all major cities of America that would be convincing enough to make people literally crap their pants and think that we were being invaded. And if we bought that, if we bought that, if we buy into that, Mm -hmm. you know, who do we, who do we have to rely on? If we are threatened by a, another culture from a different world, obviously with technology far beyond ours, who are we going to rely on to keep us safe? The military, right? Right. So we put all of our faith into the military and the military is run by the government. And then what if all the militaries in the world and all the governments in the world decide that they're going to create a one world government to keep us in check, to keep us safe? But what does that do? That keeps us all in check. Right. And so that's that's something that, um, well, David Grush, um, he discussed when they were asking him the question of who's involved in this, you know, secret, you know, government that you're describing. And he was saying, you know, both people in and out. And then there was another gentleman, um, JJ had sent me a video to, his name was William Cooper, and he was kind of a whistleblower as well. And so one of the things that he mentioned was that um, it is the Bilderberg Group that is, it's all pretty much governments from around the world who are secretly working together, and they are trying to have world domination over people. And their whole mission is to pretty much, you know, keep all the power and take it away from aliens, extraterrestrials, because they've been working with the aliens, but they kind of want to get them out of the way. And so my thing is, is why 
is it so important or what do we kind of think is the reason why the aliens are amongst us or working with these secret governments? What is your both idea about that? Well, I'm going to jump in and just say that, um, you know, Eric, I, I hear where you're coming from and I completely understand why a lot of people would think that they're going to give us just enough, but not everything and use it to their advantage. I get that. I have been talking about the fact that the veil, the thing that separates our world from the other worlds and layered realities has been thinning and thinning and never came back after last Halloween, which is very abnormal. In my lifetime, never had it happen. Um, Talked to a friend of mine who's 80, never had it happen in their life. So I started noticing this uptick with people who were spiritually sensitive, having these huge upticks in spiritual attacks, seeing stuff. And, you know, the further we've gotten away from it, it's now happening to regular everyday people who have never had a paranormal or spiritual experience in their entire life. I've seen people wake up in an, in a matter of weeks. I mean, do work and have spiritual awakenings that have taken other people 30, 40 years to have. So things are progressing very quickly. And in my belief is the whole reason why the disclosure went from drip drop here and there to kind of pouring out of the faucet is because they no longer have the capacity to hide this stuff the way that they were before. The fact that the veil is down, people are awakening and things are coming through. And there's going to be a point where enough people need to remember and know that this stuff is true and happening and be attuned to it so that we don't have a mass chaos in the streets like in 1938 when war of the worlds was played on the radio as if it was a live event and you had people jumping out of windows and burning things down you know that was a a very interesting experiment you know when you look at what grush was saying of that you know they've had these things since the 1930s war of the worlds was done in 1938 what a really awesome pilot program to see how the world at large would do with that information that we were being invaded by another race people freaked out so they realized at that point okay well we can't hit them with all this right now and so it's been the drippy droppy You know, over time, people always will use things to their advantage. That's what people do. For the most part of humanity, people are going to want to find a way to profit off of something or to keep it their own. I mean, you know, it's unfortunately a part of human nature isn't always to work together and to do everything for the benefit of all mankind. Um, People really have to level up in order to get that kind of mindset. But from what I'm seeing, what I'm experiencing, and not only just with myself, but with the plethora of people that I'm in contact with and all the different levels of their journeys that they're on, the widespread thing that I'm getting is that people are waking up extremely quickly and people are seeing things and they're having intense experiences, whether it's cognizant and awake in meditations in dreams and these things are talking and if these are people who are just waking up having those can you imagine how people who have been doing this for years i mean if we're not mentally prepared for what's to come to come it's going to be a massive wake-up call which could you know, ruin some people's minds. And there has been talk for a long time. I mean, NASA literally in 2021 hired religious leaders from all different religions in order to get them together in a room and talk about how can we present the fact that there's extraterrestrial life to humanity in all your different religions without decimating your religions and having people flip out so if nasa is doing that and then you've got all this release coming out it shows that something's got to give 
Right. It definitely has to give. But, you know, more to your point, um, you know, you, you were asking about why is the government working with the aliens? Yes. And, you know, I mean, that sounds insane. It does. Say, saying that <laughs> comment out loud sounds insane. But I know a lot of people have that question. Why would they? Well, they do. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, if you were if you were a small but powerful segment of humans that were given technology that would advance your your civilization, whether it be um, high powered computer chips or, you know, a certain kind of processing or, you know, maybe some some stuff that would be more in lines with uh, medical treatments or, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe there's been deals struck. Maybe this is all horseshit. Maybe, maybe the government isn't working with aliens. Maybe they are. If they are, then obviously there'd have to be some kind of a give and take, right? You get to stay here on our planet and you can do experiments on, you know, uh, 0.1% of our population. We'll let you abduct them and take them and do your experiments and, you know, harvest eggs or harvest semen from men and try to create your hybrids so that you guys can successfully blend in with the rest of us and, you know, and everything's okay. Maybe it's something like that. Um, or maybe... Maybe they were here before us, you know, maybe (laughs) who knows? I mean, maybe they occupy a, a slice of reality on this planet in a different dimension, right next to us. Most of the time out of our perception, you know, maybe they have as much right to be here as we do or more. Right. So, or, or more, right. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, you you can go crazy and you can you can say you can end up coming up saying some crazy, crazy shit. Um, you know, we don't know. All we do know is there is enough evidence, video and people seeing these things in the sky that don't move like they should. Right. You know, you know go ahead. Absolutely. And you know, um, With that, you know, comment that you just made, I would definitely kind of agree with that. Um, I think that if they're working with the aliens and they know that they have advanced technology that we on this earth do not have, um, that could ultimately better our civilization. And why would we not want to be more advanced? Um, And I think that that's something that, you know, could very much be a reason behind that as well. Um, but I I just feel like, you know, when it comes to our government, there does need to be a little bit more transparency about things. I agree with, you know, the notion that you made that we don't need to know everything, but I feel like we need to know enough where it's going to help us, you know, and be for our greater good. Like if if we can know some of the reasons why, if, it, if, if the government was a little bit more transparent as to the reason why they're working with the aliens and kind of saying it and giving us the reason behind it, I think a, I think people would be a little bit more understanding of it and probably wouldn't I have don't. this. In, no, no, I, I think don't. they wouldn't have a sense of fear as much. I don't because we know that they're I, not the enemy. Uh, in regards to aliens, that's one thing. Um, but in regards to just how humanity has dealt with anything that the government has talked about, you know, I'm definitely on the side of there are a lot of things our military are, you know, back part of the government that's non-elected um, needs to keep secret. 
right? We are in constant wars and constant issues with other countries that also have potentially received, you know, these downed craft and have reversed their technology as well. So, you know, if we're not just fighting the wars on the battlefield, quote unquote, it's happening all over, including in the sky, which, you know, when Space Force was announced, it was even going to be coming. It was talking about space as the new frontier of a war zone. So if if you think of it from that it perspective, that you have our regular war technology, regular wars between countries, power plays, power moves, you know, disinformation campaigns, psyops, all that stuff, right? You've got all that stuff going on between multiple countries who already have issues going on. And then you have some of them who also have some of this reverse technology. And then you've got that going on behind the scenes as well in a power play for dominance. You know, during during the time of it was during sh- not shortly after 9/11 but I I think it was within 5 years there was someone who worked pretty high up for the Pentagon. And I remember he got up and someone had asked a question, much like you had said, Kyra, of like, well, can't you disclose a little bit more about what you guys are doing um, so that we can be okay with it and that we're not breathing down your neck and asking all these questions? And I remember, because it it jarred me, he looked into the camera and he said, if you knew what we know, you would never sleep. The reason we do what we do and we keep it from you is so that you can go to work every day and live your life with a feeling of some sort of safety and comfort and enjoy the things that a lot of people work really, really hard behind the scenes to make sure you have that ability to do so. I I do feel that there's a lot of stuff that does need to be kept secret in regards to, you know, is our government working directly with the aliens? Maybe, maybe not. More so, I think, you know, in the line of they've recovered technology, they've back reversed it or stumbled upon old technology. I mean, Eric brought up a point and it was very passing when he, he referred to the Valis or the Black Knight satellite. Um, Philip K. Dick had written a book almost 100 years ago, I think, um, called Valis. Jesus, I'm sorry about that. Um, in which there was a, a this satellite that had been left by previous people. And, you know, I've talked many times about the people before the people. And, you know, when it comes to the pyramids, right, when it comes to these huge mounds that they found even in America, and the settlers would come and they would ask the natives who were already here, you know, well, who built that? And even the pyramids down in Mexico and and in other locations where they found them, the common answer was not, oh, we built them. It was, well, we didn't build them. It was the people before us. Well, who were the people before you? And none of them could seem to answer that question. So if there were people before us and maybe they leveled up or now they're living in another dimension, I mean, I have posed this statement and asked people this question, but it is true. We as humans are not the majority on this planet. But the problem is, is that we like to think we are. We're very one dimensional. A very egocentric, right? Yes. So if we were to open up and even entertain the idea, for a lot of people, they can barely get their head around the fact that the whole universe doesn't revolve around us. Do you remember when they were burning people for that? I do. Um, yeah. You know, and, and now, okay, now it's okay. We We revolve around the sun and now we have science. But think about the limitations if there has been all this technology that has been put on physics, I read a lot of science stuff and almost three to eight times a week, I am getting articles that some new boundary of physics has to be completely rewritten and redrawn because they just figured something else out. 
and it changes everything. Could you imagine going to school for all those years and getting all those degrees and you're doing your job and then finding out because, you know, someone makes this breakthrough that you have to relearn everything now. And that's Mm -hmm. almost like what we're doing. Exactly. Right. Well, on that note, I want to thank you all for joining me for another episode of Vibe Selection. As you already know, I am your host, Kyra. And so JJ and Eric, if you can let everybody know how they can connect with you on your socials or your YouTube channels. I'm JJ Rose 777 across the board, um, YouTube channel, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And I Definitely want to advise if you guys are looking for another wonderful podcast with some cool critical thinking and a lot of great paranormal stuff. Eric Salagi over here at the Uncomfortable Podcast. I'm just buttering you up, buddy. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, JJ. Thanks, Kyra. Uh, Eric Salagi, I'm the host of Uncomfortable Podcast. Uh, best way you can find me is uh, any of your podcast providers just uh, in the search bar do uh, uncomfortable eric e-r-i-c-k and it'll come up with the black and white logo with a lowercase u and an uppercase n um i got about 140 episodes out now i believe uh, into my well into my two and a half years i believe wow. um instagram facebook at uncomfortable podcast 65 and that's pretty much where you're going to find me. I, I don't mess with the the Twitter world or <laughs> anything else. Uh, you can find me on YouTube. I have uh, I've started to put some stuff out there on YouTube, and um, it's been and a pleasure Eric talking actually, with you. Eric has a fascinating and wonderful Patreon as well, and our Discord. We got a Discord server that is it's it's popping. Got a lot of great people in there, and. Uh, most Friday nights, not all, but most Friday nights, you'll find me in the uh, the voice chat, the campfire, sitting around with uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 of my my friends from Discord. And we just sit around and we talk about the weird stuff and try to sort out the, the, the latest and greatest of things that are going on in the news and uh, everything weird. So... All right. Well, as you all know that you can follow me on Instagram at Vibe Selection Podcast. Make sure you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And once again, thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Vibe Selection. Stay safe, stay healthy out there. All right. Bye bye. Thank you for joining Vibe Selection with Kyra. Come vibe out with us again next time and hear the latest on today's hot topics. Find us on Instagram at I am Kyra Mahoney or donate at www.patreon.com slash vibe selection.